today we are going to have a review of unit 7 7 the theme of the unit is arts if you are ready let's get started so the objectives of our lesson today are first we are going to revise vocabulary related to arts for example music cinema painting number two we are going to enhance our understanding of the simple past of regular and irregular verbs in all forms affirmative negative and interrogative the agenda or the outline of our lesson is as follows first we are going to revise vocabulary related to, to arts number two are going to go over the simple past of irregular and irregular verbs. Number three, we're going to identify and talk about artists. Finally, we're going to have a biography of a very famous artist. So our agenda covers basically vocabulary, number one. Number two, grammar. Number three, communication. Number four, writing. And these are the basic lessons that you covered in this unit. So let's start with the first lesson, which is vocabulary related to arts. Do you still remember some of the words that you have studied in this unit? If you still remember, arts is an umbrella term. And it might mean or it includes cinema, painting, sing singing, music, sculpture, also drawing, acting, and dancing. Of course, there are arts other arts which are not included here but we cannot cover everything okay how about these figures or these artists do you still remember them take a few minutes and try to identify if you know some of them okay let's see the answers together the first one this is Charlie Chaplin Charlie Chaplin. Number two, this is Shabia. Three, Um Kaltum. Number four, Pablo Picasso. No, this is not Pablo Picasso. This is James Dean. Public Pablo Picasso is the one on the right. This one is Louis Armstrong. This is Pablo Picasso and the last one is Mozart. Please, I want to insist on the fact that there is a mistake here. This is not Pablo Picasso. This is James Dean. Okay? So, choose the best option in this uh, list. For each artist, you have three choices. Can you guess? What was the artist before? Or what was he famous for? For example, Charlie Chaplin was a singer, a comedian, or a painter. What do you think? Of course, he was a comedian. I'll give you a few minutes. Go over all the artists and try to find the right answer. let's correct so Charlie Chaplin was a comedian can you repeat comedian number two Shabia was a painter repeat again painter Mozart was a composer can you repeat composer 
Um Kulthum was a singer. Repeat again, a singer. James Dean was an actor. Repeat again, an actor. Pablo Picasso was a painter. Repeat again, a painter. Louis Armstrong was a musician. A musician. Good job, guys. I see that some of you, I can tell that some of you have very correct answers. Excellent. So remember, comedian, painter, composer, singer, actor, and finally, a musician. Now, we have word formation. In this chart, you are supposed to derive the verb from the noun or the adjective from the verb or from the noun according, the according to the case which is given to you in the chart. For example, the verb act. What is the noun of act in your opinion? Huh? Any correct guesses? Yes, acting, you are right. Or action, that's beautiful. Or acting. You can see we, we can have different possibilities. And the last one, for the adjective, we can say what? Active, yes. Or acted. Yes. So, for this kind of exercises, sometimes we need the dictionary, or sometimes your prior knowledge, but it's better to use a dictionary here. Because for one verb, we can have different nouns, and we can have two or three adjectives. So, pause for a few minutes, do exercise, do the exercise, and then let's correct. Right, let's see the answers together. For the verb sing, we can have song or we can have singer and both of them are nouns. For the adjectives, we have the past participle sung, S-U-N-G. For paint, we have painting, painter, painted. For design, we have design, no change. And we have designer, the person. For the adjective we have, designed. Create, creator, creation, created. Inspire, inspiration, inspired. Imagine, imagination, imaginative. Compose, composer, composed. Succeed, success, successful. Sculpt, sculptor, sculpture, sculpted. Awesome, you did a good job. Okay, let's move on now to the second part of our lesson, which is what? Grammar. So, for grammar, you basically study the simple past of regular verbs and regular verbs. You still remember? Okay. Look at these pictures here. Can you identify the verb for each picture? Okay. Let's take the first one. Play and the simple past is played. For number two, water, watered, or we can say water, watered, both of them. For, th for three, we have brush, brushed. And for the last one, yes, you are right, we have jump, jumped. 
So we have play, played, brush, brushed, water, watered, jump, jumped. Ah, I have a question for you. Think about this question. What is the rule of regular verbs in the simple past? In other words, how do we form the simple past of, of regular verbs? Your guess is correct. That's beautiful. So, always verb plus ed. Verb plus ed. Take any verb that you want and you add ed. But you have to pay attention or be careful with the spelling. Let's take the verb watch and try to see it in different forms. Affirmative, negative, and interrogative. For the affirmative, you have I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, watched. So, there is no change. It's the same for all pronouns. Not like the present. For the past, it's the same for all of them. For the negative, you have I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, did not. Did not. Okay? Okay? Sorry. Did not. So, did not equals didn't. Full form and short form. For the interrogative, we have did plus subject, did plus subject, plus bare infinitive. You can see here the verb is not conjugated. It is in the bare infinitive. This is the case of regular verbs. Okay. Now it's your turn. What is the simple passive? Pick, clean, dust, watch, walk, wait, copy, rain, plan, mix. Okay? Can you do this? Let's see. So, as you can see, we added only the ed and there is no change. This is for the affirmative. Except for the verb copy here, we have c-o-p-y. It becomes copied. I-e-d. Okay? So here, we have Y, and before y, we have Y, we have what? A consonant. So when you have Y, a consonant before Y, it changes to I, E, D. But in the case of other verbs like play, we just add E, D without any change. Let's see the negative form with these two sentences. I visited London in 2011. Number two, I traveled to Moscow with my friends last year. Can you change it to the negative form? Okay. Let's see the answers. I didn't visit London in 2011. You can say I didn't or I did not. For number two, I didn't travel. You just add didn't if you want to form the negative form. Okay, how about interrogative? Did you go to the club yesterday? Let's see this example. Yes, I did. I went to the club yesterday. No, I didn't. I didn't go to the club yesterday. I want you to do the same, please. And we are going to take a few minutes and make the sentences in the interrogative, the answer affirmative, and negative. Okay? So for the first one, he played tennis last Sunday. She brushed her teeth in the evening. Your mother prepared tasty dishes last week. Your brother cleaned the room last Saturday. Okay? So, what do you think for the first one? Can somebody try to give us the answer for this one? We are going to, to see only the first one. He played tennis last Sunday. The answer would be, did he play tennis last Sunday? The answer, affirmative. Yes, he did. He played tennis last Sunday. The, answer, the negative form, no, he didn't. He didn't play tennis last Sunday. Please keep doing the same thing with the other sentences. And repeat and remember, practice makes perfect. The more you repeat, the better you become. Okay. Now let's see irregular verbs. And irregular verbs, we are going to start with the verb to be, to be. So for the verb to be, for the positive form, we have was or were. Depending on the subject pronoun. I was, you were, he was, she was, 
it was, we were, they were. For the negative, we just add not. Can you see it? Not, not, not. I was not, you were not. For the uh, negative short form, we say wasn't. So we can say was not or wasn't, were not or weren't, etc. For the questions, yes, no questions with the verb to be, we just invert the subject with the verb. I was becomes was I. Was I sleepy? Were you late? Was he at the cinema? Was she kind? Was it hot? Were we hungry? Were they at work? Okay? So please, can you try to help me to find the rule for this one? What is the rule for yes, no questions with the verb to be? <coughs> it's was or were plus subject plus could be complement, an adjective or a noun, etc. So we don't have a verb in this space. No verb. We have a complement. For the second one, for WH questions with the verb to be, we have why, or where, or when, how, how, why, when, depending on your intention. Are you asking about the place, or are you asking about the time, or you are asking about the how, etc. And the rule, we have a WH word, where, what, when, plus was, plus were, plus subject, plus a complement. So you can see the same thing here, except for here we have what? A WH word. Here we don't have a WH word because these are yes no questions and these are WH questions. I hope I'm not going too fast, okay? So let's have a look at this exercise. Pause for a few, mi few, few minutes and try to do the exercise, okay? Let's see the answers. For the first one, we have it wasn't or was not called yesterday. Two, she was hungry. Number three, were you tired yesterday? Is this a WH question or a yes no question? What do you think? We have were you tired? Huh? Yes, you're right. It's a yes no question. How about this one? Was the weather good? So we have was plus subject plus here we have adjectives, a complement, right? Were we too noisy? Six, where were you? Seven, what was that noise? Eight, who was that man? Nine, we were not or we weren't late for the meeting. Okay, so these are the corrections. We are now going to move to other verbs, not the verb to be, because the verb to be is an exception in English. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the verb, the first one. Picture number one, we have swim, and the simple past is what? Swam. Sing, sang, drink, drunk, okay? This verb here, drive, drove, write, wrote, read, read, I repeat, read, read, sleep, slept, okay? So, I have a question for you again. So, the question is, what is the rule of irregular verbs in the simple past? It's completely different from regular verbs, okay? Do we have a, a, a basic rule to follow here? Oh, I'm really sorry to say there is no rule and the rule is you have to learn them by heart. You have to learn them by heart. You have to take the list in your books, sit down at home, and try to memorize those verbs and from time to time try to remember them. You can classify them according to the musical, the, to the rhythm. For example, speak, spoke, spoken, drive, drove, driven, eat, ate, eaten. You, you, you can memorize them the way you like. I'm just giving a sample. Okay, now let's have a uh, let's see the form. So it's the same thing like, like regular verbs. For the affirmative, there is no change. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Hit the verb find. We have the verb. Uh, it be, the verb, the simple past of find is found. Okay? For the negative form, all the, pro, the, the subject pronouns I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they didn't or did not. Remember? Did not or didn't. 
find for the interrogative we have did plus subject plus the verb in the bare infinitive okay and the rule is what we have to learn them by heart so basically regular verbs and irregular verbs in terms of the form they are the same except for the affirmative because each verb has its own way of being conjugated in the simple past for regular verbs we just add ed but for irregular verbs i should know the list okay now it's time for practice let's have a look at this exercise write the past simple form of the verbs in brackets i repeat again here the rule is to learn the list by heart okay we don't add ed here at all no okay so for the first one we have the sentence i will do the first one for you um i buy some food for lunch yesterday buy what is simple pass of buy huh okay let's see the answers together so the simple pass of the verb buy is what bought number two jason didn't meet laura at the airport last night here it's in the negative form why because it is in the simple past negative form if you remember look at the this we have not and we have the verb so when you have not automatically it's the negative form when you don't have not it could either be the affirmative or interrogative so if we have for example a question mark look here we have a question mark a question mark so it's what the interrogative if you have not it's the negative form if you don't have not you don't have a question mark it's the affirmative so for the first one uh, bought for the second one we have didn't meet I'm going to read only the verse for you for the third one we have saw simple pass of C for number four we have did you speak number five didn't see number six gave number seven read we don't say read but we say read for number uh, eight we have did not take or didn't take as you like okay so we move on to the last uh, exercise in uh, in this uh, lesson of grammar past simple and regular verbs okay uh, the exercise says are the sentences true or false please take two or three minutes to the, the exercise this will reflect your understanding of the uh, lesson of past simple regular and irregular verbs okay so pause for uh, take sorry take few minutes to do the exercise and we correct together so for the for the first one <clears throat> to form the past simple we add ed to the end of regular verbs regular verbs yes we add ed so it's true for number two there are many many diff many different types of endings of regular verbs in the simple past what do you think uh, yes for example we have buy bought bought drive drove driven for the simple past we have drove for buy we have bought so different endings for number three we use did plus not in plus infinitive to for past simple negatives with all types of verbs Ah uh, no why for example the simple past of the verb to be was affirmative negative we say wasn't you see for play we can say didn't play for eat didn't eat but for the verb to be no we say was not for number four we use did plus subject plus infinitive to form past simple questions with all types of verbs it's false number five there are clear rules about the endings of past simple irregular verbs no false and the last one you have to learn all the different irregular verb forms of the simple past yes you have to learn them please by heart 
Okay, we come on, we come to the uh, last stage of our lesson, writing and communication. So, uh, I want you to, for communication, I want you to complete the conversation about Pablo Picasso, right? So, do you know, ah, here I have to write the name of the celebrity. No, I don't, who is he? He, uh, a Spanish painter, of course, he is dead. Uh, Pablo Picasso is dead, so we're going to use the verb to be in the simple past. He was born in 1881. Uh, he was born in Malaga, so what is the answer here? What else do you know about him? Okay, let's find out together. So, I want you please to try to imagine that you are doing the conversation with a friend, okay? And try to answer, and then let's practice. Let's see the answers. So, for the first one, okay, do you know Pablo Picasso? B. No, I don't. Who is he? He was a Spanish painter. When was he born? He was born in 1881. Where was he born? He was born in Malaga. What else do you know about him? Okay, let's find out together. And I can choose a different celebrity. For example, I could say, do you know Michael Jackson, for example? No, I don't. Who is he? He was, um, he was an American dancer, singer, etc. Ah, when was he born? I have to give him what? The date when he was born. Where was he born? Etc. So we can chase, ch ch choose another one. Do you know uh, another celebrity? You can choose your own. Huh? Do you know Cristiano Ronaldo? No, I don't. Who is he? He was a. F oh, we cannot say here he was a football player. Why? Because Cristiano Ronaldo is still what dead. So that's why you have to be careful with the choice of the celebrity that you choose. Okay? You choose some, but someone who is dead or still alive but you have to be careful to the tense guys this is the last uh, uh, part in our lesson this is a biography of pablo picasso i want you to take few minutes to read this biography and put the verb in this the verbs in the simple past okay let's see the answers so for the first one we have uh, pablo picasso was born in Malaga, Spain on October 20th, 1881. In addition to painting, Picasso was also a printmaker, a ceramist, stage designer, poet and playwright. He spent, the simple past of spend is spent, most of his life, adult life in France, Picasso showed, showed uh, e a passion and a skill for drawing from early age. According to his mother, his first words were piz piz, a shortening of lapis, the Spanish word for pencil. From the age of seven, Picasso received formal artistic training from his father in figure drawing and oil painting. Picasso grew up to become one of the greatest and most influential artists of the 20th century. So here we have grew, the simple pass of grow. Picasso married three times. He had the simple pass of have four children. He died on 8 April 1973 in Mogins, France. Okay, now it's your turn to write your own biography about your, your, your famous celebrity. This is the end of our class. Um, this is the end of our class. Thank you so much for being attentive. Remember always these two things. Practice makes perfect. And number two, stay home. Goodbye, everyone.